34. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. Can we have that? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> next, we have correspondence, visitors, and public comments. Uh, anyone here like to make public comment this evening? Online. All right. Agenda review. Uh, any agenda amendments tonight, please? Hi, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, yep, Don. I, and maybe it's here, and I'm missing it, but. Uh, I was under the understanding because the facilities committee had a lengthy uh, meeting with a number of items that had to be discussed, which are probably going to require money in the future, that we were going to get a report tonight. Um, in fact, Peter had asked that Toby and I would work together on that report. Okay. Uh, so I am prepared to do it. We have the Franklin project on here, right. but we want more than. Oh, more it's than more than Franklin. Okay. Yeah. Franklin's a big one, but. There were a number of other items that Laura brought to us that I think the board should be aware of. Okay, we'll add a fifth item in section six. Laura's briefing. I had thought it was next month that we were doing, or next meeting that we were doing that. That's why I was oh, confused. Okay. But whatever you want to do is fine. You had the minute, so. Would you prefer to do that tonight, Don? I would prefer to do it tonight uh, because uh, I know we have a lot of presentations, but we don't have a lot of action, so. And this is not action, really, it's more. Our committee decided that some on some of these items, we could kind of keep them to ourselves, but we didn't think that was uh, appropriate long-term when we start seeing some of the projects that uh, we're trying to clarify for future funding. Okay, well, we'll add that tonight, and I'm sure we'll talk about more because we'll be diving into the budget next month. All right, so we'll add that to section six. Um, Moving on to the business items. The first thing we have is the Swanton electric easement. Yes, and we ordinarily would be bringing this to the board for the business meeting for the first meeting of the month, but there's a timeliness here. Habitat for Humanity has purchased the land next to the Babcock building on Lefty Lane and are building two homes there. And they came to me last week with an easement to sign. Uh, for hooking onto the electrical pole on the corner of the Babcock property. Um, we brought this up at facilities last week, and so we also had a request to make sure that the village is certifying that that pole can handle the load and that it's perfectly appropriate and approved. We do have that letter from the village. Um, so what we are looking for tonight is uh, approval for the superintendent to sign the easement for that electrical pole. And it will need to be notarized, so I'll have to either bring it um, to the town offices. So Mr. Chairman, the facilities committee discussed this and uh, asked Julie to uh, notify the appropriate people that we needed the documents that assured us that the village was on board. Mm -hmm. So if we have all of that, I'll make a motion that we do approve uh, this electrical easement. And is it uh, the owner of the property? These mature is it to uh, habitat for humanity? Habitat for it, it, it actually just lists lists the property addresses for the chip because it will move to so the we'll, digital we'll office. That. We'll put that then into uh, the document and the motion and uh, move that forward. Okay, so your motion is to allow the superintendent to sign the easement. The, uh, the electrical, electrical easement, easement, easement for one lefty lane and oh. three lefty lane. Is that right? Yes. All right, there's a second. Actually, the only issue I raised was to whom we were giving it, which you clarified, so it's fine. All right, so Don's first, I saw Terry's the second. Any uh, other discussion on electrical easements? The question I probably should have had, Jason was involved in this. 
No discussion. All right, all those in favor of uh, the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 5 0. All right, now we're on to the part everyone's here for. <laughs> um, we invited middle school families to come tonight so we could uh, just have a conversation around the transition coming up from the elementary school to the U. So I'm going to turn it over to Julie. Yes. Thank you all for coming. So we have middle school open house tonight. So Christy Martin is not able to use it, but she gave me the question. We have some students here. We have students from Franklin and students from Swanton. Um, those many students were invited, and then at the last minute, some families said, "No, you have to come to open house." Mm -hmm. So that that didn't make it as, as even representation. But we are lucky enough to have Emma. You could just sort of wave your hand. Thank you. Emma is from Swanton. She's an eighth grader. Jillian is an eighth grader from Franklin. Bella, thank you, Bella, a uh, seventh grader from Franklin. Hunter, a Hunter, who is an eighth grader from Franklin. Al, who is a seventh grader from Swanton. And Maddie, hi, Maddie, who is an eighth grader from Swanton. And Ms. Martin gave me some questions. Each individual student has a question they are prepared to answer. And then I have a couple questions for any of them to answer. And then, of course, if the board has a couple questions, I'm sure they'll be that's the next question. Are all of the students from the street? Are all of them? Each of them. That's why we gave each of them a question. So, so I, I would like to invite them to group four to come right up here and be part of our team. That'd be great. Yeah, you're welcome to come so right up. First four, maybe they're going to speak, or the four players. The first is Emma. Four seats right there. Emma, Jillian, oh, and Bella. We don't fight. Although we do fight. Maybe it would make sense for Hunter and Ella and Maddie and Bella to sort of move your hand or something. So we can all have one. I thought we The teachers, I feel like, like being like in a different like area and like learning different things, like being in like middle school. I feel like that was really exciting. What were you worried about when you started here? Um, I was worried about a lot of things actually. <laughs> um, not knowing anybody, being in a bigger school, not knowing where I'm like classes were, not only any of my teachers, um, getting lost, having the older kid be mean, and a lot of other stuff I'm not going to go into. <laughs> Bella, did you hear any rumors about MBU that you learned are not true? I learned two that stick out to me, and the two are one that there were litter boxes in MBU, which I found, I don't know who came up with that, that's not true at all. And then another one was that the older kids like were mean. They would like bully you and they like wouldn't help you like do anything. They just kind of like be weird. And I figured out that that's not true. I personally have never had an experience where a kid has like a little bit of Um and if you're like lost or like you need help getting somewhere, I think they're most of them are willing to help you get to those places. And I think it is like comforting having like older kids to like know that they're there for you and help you with that. 
So Hunter and Al, this is for both of you. What helped you become more comfortable here? Personally, what helped me become more comfortable was just going through the day-to-day -day schedule, just getting to know what I would do every day and getting to know like my teachers and my classmates. It just all helped to go, like get into the rhythm. Um, I got to play field hockey as a sixth grader, so it kind of helped to know when people like the way that were to me in middle school and like because we came into the theater a few times to know where some stuff was, which helped a lot. Okay, so Maddie and Bella, what advice would you give to new seventh graders about MU? Sure. Um, <clears throat> honestly, it's not as scary as it seems. Like, you have to go in and like just try your best, and you'll do fine. Like, it's not super super stressful and most any rumors that you're hearing it's not true like it's pretty nice here <laughs> um i think just like being yourself when you're trying to make friends because if you're being someone you're not and then you make friends there are there's like at some point going to find out that's not you and if someone wants to be friends with you they should want to be friends with you because of who you are so i think just like being yourself um and that's like probably the best way to make friends Mm -hmm. So these next two questions are for any of you to answer. To help with the transition, you came in for step up day, drop in night, a half day orientation. Which of those really helped or what did help? I think orientation day helped a lot. Like the first like half day that we had, that was only seventh and ninth graders because it helped like having like not as much kids that were like crowding and everything like it wasn't as chaotic and it just helped like knowing that you weren't going to embarrass yourself in front of like a bunch more people who did end up like getting lost or something so i think that first half day like helped me a lot for school mm -hmm. a lot of nods <clears throat> that helped me too definitely and being able to go to my to go to all my classes and to know where they were anything that we don't do what could we do better to help students transition from elementary to middle school i can't think of something because i think like all the stuff we do really did help like like i feel comfortable personally so i think that all the things we did like help Maybe instead of doing a half day for orientation, like a, like what your full schedule would be, and just like showing you like where your classes would be and your teachers, so you could like know them more before the first day. Mm -hmm. When you do step up day, do you get to see the team that you really end up with in the fall? You I don't even remember step up day because yeah, it was just a virtual, well, you had, it was just a virtual Google Meet for like half an hour. Oh, I don't yeah. remember. That's right. So that that may be skewing your answer a little bit. Did anybody have a real in person step up day? Seven quarters. Yeah. Right. Was that better than maybe the half hour virtual? Um, yeah. Well, I don't know if the virtual. Was <laughs> <better>. <laughs> but, uh, you I, can only imagine. I can imagine it's a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Okay, are there any questions? That's the list that was rehearsed. Are there any questions from the board? So, may we ask questions? That's sure what I asked. All right. Uh, many, many years ago, I worked with middle school students, and one of the big issues was lunch. Is the lunch good here? It is good. Yeah. It's too early. It is? <laughs> no, it's for not. you. Seventh grade eats first lunch, which is at 10 50 until 11 15. And then eighth graders eat third lunch, which starts at 11 36 and goes to about almost uh, almost noon. So as you see, some eighth graders are starving that time, and some <laughs> graders are saying that it's too early yet. Yeah. If you uh, 
I'm from St. Franklin. It's a fairly small school. We go and some of the people here from Swanton, which is probably the largest school in the group. Are people mixing fairly well? I mean, the Swanton kids kind of stay by themselves. And... I feel like people mix fairly well because, like, they would know people from like sports they do. So, like, playing mm -hmm. hockey or baseball, they would just like know who they were with. So, they would like automatically just be friends with them already. Okay. Okay. Um, something else that's a lot better is Franklin like always make sure if there was at least one other Franklin student that was like in your homeroom class, so like you'd always like have someone to be with. So I think like had just like having whether you were close with them or not, just like other kids that you've grown up with, like in your homeroom class, I think would help too. Because I think it gives you an opportunity to get closer with them. One of the things that we try to do, we're very intentional about when we create the, the middle school homerooms is we try to identify at least a positive person that they have, whether the parents have identified, the students have identified, a teacher has identified, or even an administrator has identified somebody that they work well with and would be a good match for them. Um, and so we're very intentional when we, we do the, the selecting of homerooms to make sure that they at least have somebody that every Franklin kid got somebody. There's, we've never created one where there's only like one Franklin student out there. So there's at least, you know, there's not just one Swanton girl, there's at least a couple of Swanton girls. And most likely one of them has been identified as somebody that they are close with and can work well with. Jillian, did any of your worries turn out to be true? Um, getting lost. No, well, except for one time, but not really. Can I say something else too that helped? Like, it's kind of like answering kind of like Emma's question a little bit though, um, about like what helped me was Miss Martin was flexible with, I had an adult bring me in and give me a tour and um, who had like called Miss Martin, like asked her and she was really flexible with the fact that like they were like, allowed to um bring like kids in to like give them a tour and stuff so that helped did, sorry I, did the tour when did the tour happen did the tour happen in the summertime did it happen late right late before school started oh i think i had two i had a couple of middle school kids that i toured around as well this past summer and there's usually a couple a handful and some of them are just really anxious about coming into the building and they want to kind of know their way around and kind of know the rooms are going to be in and where the lockers may be. And sometimes the parents are pretty anxious about it, more so than the kids are, and they want to know where things are at. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just kind of helping them feel a little bit more comfortable before they walk through the door. Toby says, you are our future. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I'm glad you are uh, Thunderbirds. You will all make MBU a better place. Toby. Uh, yes, Terry. I just have to you know, it's so funny because I was thinking back when I was young, I don't think back to the parents. And I was thinking I've gotten so much wiser as I've gotten older. And then I heard you all talking about, yeah, be yourself because you're friends. So it's just very wise. And so it's, it's very impressive. It makes me feel really good to have you all talking tonight. And your parents being with you. And I would like to know, I think sometimes our school has a reputation. I'm so glad to hear you all so positive. Sometimes people think MBU is not the best place in the world. And I think it's a really great place. I have three kids that went through here and they all had great experiences. So is there do you have any ideas for us or any suggestions for us as a school board that we could that we could help to change some of that or to support you all better? Or, It's a hard question, but you all are the ones in the school. So maybe if you think about it, you can always pass it on if you can't think of anything like that. Carrie, maybe if they come back, the same group comes back in April or May, <laughs> they can give us some good ideas what it's like. No, in this group, they'll have like 10 demands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking during the school year of things that you would share with the school board to help. Uh, the principals and the teachers make us a better place. But we need to know those things because I I moved here after working in education for many 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 years, 
And I was hearing in the community, every you is okay, but it's just okay. And I came on the school board, and I have to tell you, I've worked in a lot of school districts as an administrator. Every you is a good school, but it's what you people make it. And, and I'm really happy here and optimistic tonight. I mean, if it's, if it's if this is our seventh grade, we're in good shape. <laughs> What's up? Seventh and eighth grade. Some, we get it. We get it. <laughs> we do. Well, they got promoted within the first one. <laughs> but anyway, uh, whether they're seventh, eighth, or ninth graders, uh, I think we're, we're in good shape. Before we let you all go, uh, since you brought your parents with you, I'm, I'm going to take one of the questions Julie asked and, and pose it to the group. Uh, is there anything that, in your view, that the school could do better to uh, improve the transition from elementary to the middle school. <laughs> I'd say from response, you got from all these kids that it's been stuff going on. So positive. I think there's a lady right here. Her body language says she wanted to say something. Did somebody cut you off? No, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think that the transition has, it's been very good for our daughter, um, Bella. She um, she actually looks forward to going to school in the mornings and that hasn't happened for a while. So um, yeah, I think that she's transitioned very well. I think that your step up day you do is an amazing thing. Um, I think that takes the pressure off them being so so overwhelmed with so many students. Um, maybe make it a full day would be my only suggestion. It's a lot to cram into just a half a day. Would, would that be the step up day that's in June or the one that's in August? Which um, one you to? August. Okay. 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 I'm sorry, could could both of you just say your name for Purette so she can uh, get it in our meeting minutes? Um, Heidi Meishi. Uh, Jesse would learn. All right. Any other comments from, from anyone that you want to share before we go? All right. Well, I really appreciate all of you coming. Uh, students, I know this can be nerve wracking sitting at the table and getting grilled by questions, um, but we really appreciate it. And we do want to hear from, from all of you and your peers. So you know, feel free to reach out to your teachers and principals if you have anything you want to communicate to them or to us, we're happy to hear it. So thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so next on the agenda is a tech center update. So we have Leon Wright, who's here, and uh, do you mind introducing yeah. everyone else as you have tomorrow? Yes, I have with me uh, Lisa Dorosha, our assistant director, and um, also manages our career development center. And we also have Ian Petros, who is our outreach coordinator. And we have two students um, with us that attend the MBU. Um, we have Kelly Fernando Ward, and we have uh, Emily Feroldi. Did I get that right? <laughs> um, so I'm going to start us off, and then um, Tino is going to take over to the students. So we'll try to get around our career development center. So again, I'm Leanne, director of the Northwest Career Tech Center. Um, I've had the privilege to work with Julie at a Franklin Central Center Supervisor Union and other trails. Um, and I've been really privileged to work with Dan and Jen. Um, they are my ideas with the Northwest Career Tech Center. We have two sending schools. One is MBU and the other is DFA, who we're attached to. Um, we also have DFA Fairfax that is also a sending some students our way and that happens when we have programs that are not offered in their sending technical schools 
So we have public safety and fire services that is often, excuse me, that is often um, where students come, come to that. Um, sorry, I feel a little faint. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that usually happens to me, but no, yeah. no, nope, yeah, okay. okay. yeah, she, she could talk all night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's unusual. Yes, I know. Thank you, Lisa. She's a uh, she's the person. Yeah, I take um, care. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep, sitting down would be good. There you go, Julie. Have a folder. <laughs> here. So, um, so back again. So, um. Dan and Jen have been the liaison um, for us at the Tech Center. Um, we met this summer and we came together to try to work together on schedules and making sure that things are fine tuned for, um, for both of our schools. And I just feel really lucky to have MBU as a partner. Um, we're attached to BFA, so we oftentimes um, talk more about BFA and we really want to make sure that we partner more so with, with MBU for that reason. Um, it's easy for the BFA students to attend our tech, technical center because they're right there. MBU has to have the transportation that comes um, all the way from MBU, what, 15 minutes or so, but it is, you know, add it, it adds up to time that's not spent in the classroom. And um, we brought two students that can specifically talk about um, what the experience in real life um, at our technical center. There, I repeat myself a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, Petzer is our outreach coordinator. We'll take it from here. Sure. So as Liam mentioned, I'm the average coordinator for the Tech Center. Uh, my job is mainly uh, public relations, community outreach, and just kind of spreading the word about the Tech Center as a resource, as both a resource and an option uh, for high school students. Um, at present, our student body is around 330 students, and uh, our non-MRUSD students, um, which comprise of uh, NBU, BFA Fairfax, and uh, some of the homeschool population uh, is about 20%, and we're always looking to, you know, increase that number, though, you know, all are welcome, and the more the merrier. Um, we have 10 programs, they're all half day, and um, students turn to the Tech Center, uh, or look at the Tech Center as an option uh, for two huge reasons. Um, it, it's all career-oriented programming, and they leave high school with Industry recognized credentials that um, you know people spend a lot of their you know, their post high school time uh, earning. Um, some of them are up here. That's just like a drop in the bucket for what we do offer, and it's uh, over a variety of programs. The other thing is, in addition to the uh, fast forward college credit that high schools get through the state, um, we have uh, agreements with Vermont Tech, Central Maine uh, Community College, and CCD through uh, multiple programs to offer students additional college credit while they're in the classroom. So our teachers are working out of their canvas shells. Um, and some of our programs offer up to 12, uh, 12 college credits to students um, should they choose to A, take advantage of that and B, uh, you know, test through their, uh, their uh, canvas shells. So that's a nice thing that we are proud to, uh, proud to talk about every time. Uh, I have two students with me that are ambassadors for our school and their programs. Uh, Callie is a year two human services student, and Emily is a year one med profession student, and they're both uh, MBU students as well. And before I uh, let them take over, I just wanted to mention like some of the things that they've signed themselves up for here, and their, this information is in, in the folder. Um, this is also last year's outreach information. The new stuff uh, has changed a little bit. We've added quite a bit over uh, over the past year. But um, so in human services, we have this huge list of uh, credentials and, and certifications that the students can earn, and they'll also through CCD be able to earn um, intro to human like three credits for an intro to human services class, three credits for an early childhood class, and a human growth and development course. Medical professions has uh, also a, a huge list of college credits. They uh, they go through human biology, medical terminology, uh, intro to healthcare and nutrition. Um, the med class two over the course of two years, um, students have the option of either earning their LNA in school, which is a huge deal, or their uh, certified pharmacy technician um, certificate and. Um, some students have even gone so far as to take advantage of our adult ed programming while they're in high school. So uh, some med students have 
gotten their uh, farm tech certification in the classroom and then come to night school um, through our adult ed programming um, to get their LNA, which is huge. Um, it's not a bad summer gig when you're in college or it's not a bad career to start, to start with after you graduate. So I will turn it over to you two and um, talk about what, why, why you chose NCTC, what you, yeah. Um, so um, I heard about the NCTC through um, the teachers coming to the school and introducing it to us for the presentation. And I was kind of like, oh, you know, but you talk to your counselors about it, they encourage you. You talk to your friends who have taken the course, a lot of them encourage you to do it. Um, which I know it's early, but I would also um, encourage it to other people. Um, we kind of like dive right in. Um, you're always engaged. You have um, a lot of quizzes, but it's nice. It's not scary quizzes. <laughs> you're focused, you know, it keeps you in there. Um, I like that it has the uh, opportunities to get your LNA and um, pharmacy technician thing. A lot of people don't get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to be able to get that early. Yeah. Um, like Dina said, I do human services and I am a second year in it. So this is my second year going to the tech center. And I remember the reason why I came to the tech center was because we had like a little, I, I think it's like a little tour. Like we had like this whole little day that uh, MVU set up that we went to the tech center and we were like, did these fun activities in the tech center. And I can't remember, it was either seventh or eighth grade. It was like a while ago. And um, I remember I was so gung ho on like being med professions and I totally like turned myself around and I was like, oh, I, never mind. I wanna go to human services. And um, I think that human services has helped me like figure out where I'm going so much. Like I had no idea. I still really feel like I have no idea, but I feel like I'm kind of getting towards an idea of what I wanna do. Like we go to these schools and we're like, okay, um, do you wanna be a teacher? Do you wanna be a counselor? Like what maybe do you want to do? You go off the um, like uh, work-based learning, which I, I really appreciated doing. However, it was mostly like schools and daycares. And I was like, I don't know about working at a school, <laughs> but I, I feel like it helped narrow in so much that I'm just like, I recommend a lot of people to do it. So anyone have any questions for these two? I just wanted to add that our human services program now has a collaboration with our district where if you take the paraeducator course or the paraprofessional, the paraprofessional, paraprofessional. Um, then they can be employed um, within our district as paraprofessionals within um, our elementary schools. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we're trying to spread that out even beyond the human services program. We all know that we're shorthanded, you know, with all employees, but trying to engage our youth back into our schools. We actually have many, many of our students that are employed as custodians during the day and also in the evening. I just want to make sure that there's a permanent opportunity available even before you graduate high school. Before um, before I turn it over to Lisa, I just wanted to say, uh, while we're on the topic you were discussing earlier, uh, middle school engagement, the transmission to high school, I'm so happy that you guys remember um, coming to visit in, in middle school. And I reminded me, it reminded me that I totally forgot to talk about our, our current relationship with MVU and our sending schools um, and what we do annually. Um, for at the middle school level, we always uh, travel and uh, put on what we call uh, our tech center roadshow, where a, rep a student representative from every program, kind of like this, will come talk about uh, why they chose the tech center, um, what they do in their program, and what they hope to do after school. Um, and then students come toward the tech center. We give them a little survey about um, what they think they'd like to do career-wise after school, and then. We pair them up with uh, those matching programs when they come to visit. And then in high school, we do that same roadshow different 
presentation um, and also visit the career classes to talk about our, our programs in depth and what we offer college credit wise, uh, credential wise. And yeah, uh, so I just want to make sure I mentioned that. But uh, so I'll turn it over to Lisa DeRocha, our assistant director, and also our. Um, Oh, well, you had a question. Or, um, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. First. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was just curious because you know you don't have to tell me exactly what you're going to do, but I'm just curious is that what you'll be certified and what you'll be ready to do when you graduate from high school. And then, I mean, you can choose all kinds of things, I'm sure, but what we already have skills that you're already certified for when you graduate. Um, I know that I personally would be able to like just jump right into schooling for uh, like being a teacher or I have a, like I am a mandated reporter. Well, my certification is about to expire, but- uh, You've already got that. Yes, uh, it's a yearly certification, I believe. Um, I have taken, just retaken Bloodborne Pathogens. So I am also certified in that. And then I take CPR and uh, AED and Emily will be taking that this year. And there's like so many that is you can take and you will be taking. And like there's some optional ones. Like I remember there was one optional one, but I don't remember what it was. And I don't know exactly how that would jumpstart you. I just know that it would. Like I haven't gone too into depth on. That's what we're, we're doing in our projects right now, actually. So this makes me look like I don't do my homework. But <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> this this contract will be watching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Oh. I'm impressed. But um, yes, so uh, I have a ton of certifications that'll give me a, a jump start. And I believe with most of the certifications I have, I would go be able to go straight into jump uh, working at a um, working at a daycare yeah. with very little extra trainings to have to take. And drawing blood can't do that. I'm not in that program, but yeah. I will oh, I will no, not yet, but it looks I, I mean that's pretty impressive to yeah. graduate and have all those different pursuits that you can go on based and having so I mean knowing that you're so competent when you graduate. She could choose to take the phlebotomy class in the evening and then drop blood, which we still will talk about. Sometimes. Have you had a chance to do any certifications? Oh, I know you're only a few weeks into the program. Yeah. One, uh, one more thing I will mention, and as Leanne and Lisa said, I could like we could all talk all day about what we do at the tech center. But uh, next month, the medical professions program is uh, going to take a a pretty special annual field trip. Uh, they do this New England tour of colleges. It's an overnight field trip where we rent the bus and they go look at campuses of all different sizes and uh, they kind of split it up through, over the course of their two years, they'll do uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine this year, and then they'll do Massachusetts, I think, Rhode Island um, next year. And um, so it's like, a, like, I think back when I was in high school looking at colleges, like I could have benefited so much from looking at, uh, looking at different schools or having the opportunity to go. Um, so I thought that was, I think that's pretty cool and it's yeah. something for, for them to look forward to. And more and more of our programs are doing that as well. So anyway, without, without getting, uh, oh. I was just, I was curious, you're finding yourself, which I think is great. I think the program sounds like it's helping you find out what you want to do for your future. And I know you just started it. Um, and I didn't realize that you guys can, are going to walk out of there with certifications, yeah. which I think is amazing. Um, and I know you've only been in it for a few weeks, but do you feel you're going to stop after your graduation with your LNA or that you're going to continue your education to go further than that? I'm just, I mean, I know, I know it's like yeah. you're probably tossing around a thousand ideas in your mind, but I'm just a little curious. Um, so, right now, um, I'm really enjoying the class and all the stuff we get in it. Um, I like the speed of that. It's not like slow, like one paper per day. You're constantly doing something, um, which I think is beneficial. So it's been making it easier for me to decide that I want to continue that. Yes. I wanted to add that the Agency of Education, and let me know if I'm, repeat, if I'm repeating what others have said because the stars were you know, moving out of my head. <laughs> um, but the Agency of Education has deemed that we 
um, we have to prepare students for high wage, um, high skill, and high demand careers. And so they have dictated the competencies and the standards for which we need to have in every program. Um, and specifically for our cosmetology program, we needed to improve it so that every student could graduate with a thousand hours and be ready to sit for their cosmetology license when they graduate high school. Is either of you, well, you're, you're a second year, have you taken any community college courses? Yes, actually, I have. Um, I don't remember exactly which one. It was Human Growth and Development, the three uh, credits, and I am signed up for uh, Intro to Early Childhood Education, I believe. Was it a good experience? Yes, I definitely think it was very beneficial to like see how the tests and like how intense like the tests are going to be and like we were only allowed one page of um, of notes which I was like oh that's kind of a lot <laughs> like that's not a lot of stuff so I was like writing super small and put all of it in and then I didn't use half of it so like well, that's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, in the legislature, when we decided to make money available for this, we wanted to vote at work. And the only way you know it works, you know, to have students who have been there. So, yeah, I have one question. Sorry. Um, do, you, do you find it, so you, do you, you go in the morning and then you come back here and do you, or do you go in the afternoon and then come back? It's both. It's so you run on two different schedules. Um, the first years go in the morning and they come back um, either 10.05 or 10.45-ish is when we would leave. Um, and I don't know what time you guys were on, but to be honest, I don't care. It's after, it's more towards 12. Like, after lunch. lunch. Yeah. Do you find it difficult to go there and come back early? Like, probably be easier when you leave here to go there because you don't have to come back. Do you find it? Challenging with your other studies and the transition. Yeah. Um, me personally, I don't. Um, I like the way it transitions. It's like a 10 minute bus ride back. You get to sit and let it all soak in and then relax a little bit and then you're back into something else. So I've never had that. I, I have to say that my hardest transition is from the morning to the afternoon tech, which is. What I find is interesting, but um, I still like I still doing well in all of my classes. It's just like it feels like I should be there in the morning. Because you're in the schedule mode from last yes, year. Yes, yeah. because like mm -hmm. last year it was in the morning. You try not to fall asleep in class, and this year <laughs> it's in the afternoon, and auto tech wakes you up. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know how much time we have, but I'll be relatively quick. So at every single regional technical center per statute, we need to offer adult career and technical education training. And that means that the uh, Northwest Career and Technical Center is a location for any adult, including high school students, to earn additional training. For instance, if you want to become a phlebotomist. So what I want to do is refer to you this handout in the folder, and it just gives you an overview of the courses that we provide. Most of them happen in person, and then we also have a partnership with a third party online vendor. So we have everything from culinary arts to um, a lot of medical related training. And again, remember, this could be for any age, I would say 16 or older, because we do have some mature 16 year olds who can take some of these courses, and they're available for everyone. It's amazing. We have the new, the new one, which we're really excited about, is Certified Dental Assistant. Mm -hmm. And what we do with that is if you are interested in becoming a dental assistant, we contact dentists in the area who's interested in hosting you as a student and you learn dental assisting online and then also do the internship at the dental office. Another very important 
uh, training not to forget is welding. Uh, this is very popular. And we work with two welders and people can earn a welding certificate in many different areas as well. So all these classes cost money. The last page at the bottom right talks to you about the different funding streams that are available. And most, I would say 99% of the adults who apply for these programs, and it could be any of us, there's funding out there. You can go through BSEC, you can go through your employer, you can go through book rehab. It doesn't mean that you have to have low income in order to come to these programs. You can be any type of income. You can be any type of background. It's just that passion to learn and want to move ahead or just want to completely change your career. And I have conversations every day with adults who are just saying, you know, I, I'm this and now I want to do that. So it's a lot of career counseling. So since these do cost money, this is something that's very important for all of you to know because this is a recent uh, change that happened in the legislature, is any training course that a high school student wants to take outside of high school is not covered by dual enrollment. Dual enrollment only covers college credit courses. So if a student wants to take a welding course, and maybe MBU will say, if you take that welding course, maybe we'll give you a science credit for that welding course. But that student has to pay for that welding course. If they wanted to take an English class in college, they would have it paid for through dual enrollment. So that is not equitable at all. So for the longest time, all of the tech centers have been really pushing the legislature, legislatures to say, please find us a funding stream for students, high school students who want to take additional training, but it's not college courses. They did it. This year, they finally did it. Representative Marcotte out of Newport really pushed this. So in everybody's packet, this is hot off the presses, Don, <laughs> um, is something called a secondary student IRC pilot program. IRC is industry rated credential. So there's $100,000 in the statewide pot. Each tech center can claim up to 20,000. The math doesn't equate because there's 17 regional technical centers. So it's first come first serve, very important. And there's a, an application that's attached to this and I wanted to make sure all of you saw that. So please encourage your high school students, and they're seniors, they'll have to be seniors according to this to apply soon, even if the course doesn't start until the end of the year. This includes commercial driver's license training, which is over $5,000. So they need to fill this out with their guidance counselor. And here's another thing, is they are requesting a copy of the student's PLP to be attached to this. And in the PLP, they need to reference that, for instance, CDL is part of their career pathway. So please call me because we want to get as many kids through this as possible because it's a pilot program, John. And if you don't spend the money, no, no, I'm not going to try to take the call, but I call. Right. Well, let me ask you this though: the student has to be enrolled. At no, it could be any high school student. It does not have so to be. So if I was sitting here them. and I, for whatever reason, decided I could work the career technical center my schedule, yeah. but I'd like this, I can go do it. Correct. It's pretty powerful. And if MBU wants to host a training on site, I can find an instructor for you. I know you have a nice welding facility. There could be some medical training. So we can really expand the outreach to <coughs> this part of the mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, the choir here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so does our guidance department have this information? Yeah. Smart. <laughs> yes, and I emailed it to. I did the minute I had this in yes. my hands. I sent an email. Out. She was on the phone with me, and the email came yeah. within minutes. Wow. And we also have Alyssa, our PLP teacher, sitting behind us next. So she, oh, her eyebrows have been lifting a lot during this presentation. So that's very exciting. We'll be we'll visit the schools in October. We'll be dropping off um, an updated version of this with uh, with their guidance counselors. So. 
And this applies to online training as well. We do partner with ed to go So if you have a student who wants to be like a veterinary assistant, there is an online course for that. And this particular program would pay for that. So those two ambassadors to promote that program to work. Absolutely. the work. I mean, uh, are there questions for anyone in the group? I can't see Toby anymore because of his presentation. Oh, okay. so, uh, I guess my question is there is a plan in place to be able to take advantage of this here, or is it something you all are planning now because it's so new? It's brand new. We sent it to the guidance director, um, and uh, we're going to be getting that information out. So we want as many of those students as practical taking advantage of these opportunities. Yeah. 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 Um, it was, it, yeah, it, we're, we're, it's much stronger than it was about four years ago. It was kind of at, um, it was at a low point in, in, uh, in for numbers. Uh, and we've got about maybe, I want to say 40. That's the ballpark students from MBE right now. Uh, we do have a question comment on here from Toby. Says uh, my daughter is currently a sophomore at MVU. She might have missed some of the opportunities to learn about uh, the offerings of the tech center because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Could you confirm if she and or other ninth tenth graders might have missed some of the normal tours and presentations provided by the tech center? And if she and her classmates uh, have, is there a plan to get? Than what they might have. Perfect. So I, I don't mind answering that question. Um, and and for you students, um, tenth grade is the year to be thinking about coming into the tech center. They can start uh, all any of the programs um, from their junior year, so they would apply this year. Um, my colleague Susan Boslin and I come and speak to all the careers, uh, the career classes, and a few English classes. I want to say so we can cover the ninth and tenth grade. Uh, students here and uh, they get all of that same information. What they didn't get is a, probably a tour if that was the year of the shutdown. If they were in eighth grade, the year of the shutdown, uh, then they would not have received a tour. What we did instead was we created a virtual, uh, a virtual tour of our facility with uh, student interviews for each program and all that information. Um, so it's not the best substitute for that that sort of thing, but we're also willing to give you know uh, scheduled tours with anyone that wants to see the space or wants to learn more about it. So uh, that's uh, that's that's always an option. But yeah, we will be we will be back in and uh, we will make the same offer. Like if you want to come see the space, we can uh, schedule a shadow day. It might be wise to have both the freshmen and the eighth graders be able to do it. Do the same thing. That's. Uh, that's something we can certainly work in if that's a uh, yeah we'll be in touch about that i'd love to see that happen and we had talked about our sophomores being able to attend uh as well mm -hmm. mr makes an excellent point 20 years ago i did a survey in the cp side we found out and this was chipmunk on it that shows that many students in seventh eighth grade are made up of time what they want to do and the tech center has not been part of the information flow. Maybe we would have. So that's a bit of a problem. That's true. And another thing that I that I also didn't mention is that uh, uh, we host all of our non MRU, all of our middle schools, but all of our non MRUSD uh, middle schools. We send an invitation for them to come compete at the high school in uh, STEM challenges. Um, and that's another fantastic way for, for students to come uh, both A, get interested in some trades and B, see our space before uh, before eighth grade, before high school. So, um, uh, and that's a relatively new event that may be about seven years old. So um, we've, we've come a long way over, over the past 20 years to try to make sure that we're, we're part of uh, middle school career exploration.
And I believe Emily, you currently holds the trophy for the last time. You do. Just, <laughs> just, say, just, <laughs> just want to make sure I got that. Any other final closing thoughts? So none. All right. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. It was great that you all made the space at Warrior. Thank you. I'm glad you're staying there. When we make comments, that's okay. I do. Thank you. Oh yeah, well, I'll be working with guys. I'm still trying to figure out who does what with all of this, but it's absolutely <laughs> All right, well, that was a, a great segue into our next topic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I sit here and just ask you to flip through slides, Gary has the slides. Gary's got them. Oh, I agree. I am. There's a problem with Zoom. Oh, fun. So only one picture. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. I'm like, this one's over. Um, can you do an introduction? I'm not sure. <laughs> Everyone knows it was. So, this is Alyssa Urban. Alyssa has been a part of the MBU Social Studies Department for a long time. Not dorky. <laughs> and uh, and uh, just moved into a position as uh, doing our PLPs here in the and I, you know, we're pretty excited about it because we have a lot of enthusiasm for students and learning and student voice. So I was pretty excited when I heard that. Not to put any pressure on, but I've been waiting for this report for two years. Last year. <laughs> well, I've only been working on it for like. Four months, so <laughs> 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 as prepared. Yeah. 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 six weeks, and they go to one for That and I know some of those middle school students, and yeah, they did great. I can't wait to show them in class. Yeah. Um, and a little bit of background. I don't know if any of you were on the board in 2018. It was when I received a role in fellowship to explore ways to make our school more connected to the community and a lot of that work really ended up leading me here so mm -hmm. i've been kind of working on this for a few years so um i have a fun activity <laughs> if your brains are awake at 7 30. uh the class that i teach so the role of PLP coordinator, personalized learning teacher, has two main parts. So, ooh, there. overseeing and um, bring together all the elements of PLPs seven through 12, and then also teaching a middle school elective. So, it's one quarter for seventh and eighth graders. And the title of that elective is learning advocacy. And it's a little tricky because some middle schoolers I meet first day of school, some middle schoolers I won't meet until April. So making a meaningful elective that's connected to uh, students' PLPs and their personalized learning has been interesting to design. I've been building off of the work of uh, Kaylee Oldham, who's in this position last year. When it was created. So, what I handed out is a sample of something I did with seventh graders uh, in the last couple of weeks. So, this is uh, an example. And if you like, would you rather questions in the first wow. page is would you rather? Oh and the second page is an activity that was inspired by um, something Ashley Bowen did with art students to help them get to know themselves, where they picked uh, certain shapes and colors based on things about themselves and created a three-dimensional piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. And they're all hanging across from the high school office and I saw her hanging them up and I said, oh my God, it's so cool. Tell me everything about this. <laughs> and so the activity on the back was my version of this, something to 
engage seventh graders and be able to do an activity that involved movement, but also to help them get to know themselves better. So I do have a background way back in college. I was a middle level education undergrad, one of the first of three of UVM to receive a middle level degree. So I have some experience. Um, so this activity, students are selecting because seventh graders don't always know how to come up with what they value and what they think is important in life. So these activities, um, either on paper or done online, we're keeping track of. And within the next couple of weeks, seventh graders are going to make their actual PLP site, either with Ben Green or Brooke Sturdivant in their social studies classes, which was something they were doing already, where they pick out images to personalize the homepage of the Google site, and they do a learning styles inventory, and they track their goals for proficiency in classes, and they start thinking about what they hope for in life. And in seventh grade learning advocacy, we do activities like this, but we'll also be doing um, a career interest inventory, which I am coordinating with the careers teachers to pick one that will work best for when they enter into 10th grade. Um, we also will do a mapping activity because that's one of their social studies proficiencies um, about their opportunities here at MVU. So I'll be coordinating with the faculty to identify all the cool stuff on the MBU grounds and we'll do tours and mapping of you know what's in the barn and what happens at field studies and have you been to the band room so we'll start there in seventh grade and then in eighth grade the current eighth graders they haven't done this activity so we'll do a little version of that they know MBU a little bit better than the seventh graders but in eighth grade, that's when they're going to tour the tech center and we're going to talk about other opportunities in the area. So what are the things they might want to do in the community? We'll start talking about things like community service or, you know, possibilities for um, other field trips. There might I think we'll be able to do the Fort Ticonderoga field trip, which is Dave Zabo and Tom Sumner take students overnight to check out that historical site. They go to the Shelburne Museum. So they'll be um, working on activities to get to know themselves, but they'll also be looking at what they're learning and how that fits into their goals. So, um, an activity like this, and I brought some just a little bit more exciting visuals. I brought some samples of the second part of what the seventh graders did with the Is It You? So today we took the statements from that second page about what they want to do and they picked their top five and I had them write them in terms of present tense and then draw a little picture of what that'll look like. So some wonderful Aww. stick figures here of, you know, I'm part of a team, I see new places, I help people, I help animals. So engaging some visual thinking and getting, you know, getting their brains to think about the future in a more concrete way. I think that's one of the big steps for middle schoolers. Um, so, uh, the other things I have to share, I've started working primarily with Jen and with Tyler Meigs, the director of guidance, but I've been meeting with all sorts of groups of people <laughs> to talk about our outcomes for personalized learning. And I think it's really important as part of this work to create a shared vision and action plan. So, and building off of all the great work that happened with Portrait of a Graduate, thinking about what are the essential, you know, uh, the, we have the proficiencies. So in addition to our proficiencies, what should every student get? at MVU, and then what are the options for getting that? And obviously things like the Tech Center are a really great opportunity. Um, for that outcome, 
what I've been working on is thinking about how can we inform people about what's happening and by people, I mean students, teachers, really just starting here at MBU, just making sure all the teachers knew <laughs> what PLPs are and, and how they could be used, um, but expanding into the community, engaging students, working with the elementary schools, making sure that everyone knows what, um, how this factors into MBU and what MBU can provide for the community. And, PLPs, the second outcome for this year, should be used to facilitate student-led conferences. And March is definitely a very realistic goal, but we might see some of that in the fall. And we're focusing on eighth grade, but I have some very excited teachers mm -hmm. in seventh grade and ninth grade and 10th grade. And then uh, Tyler and I have talked a bit about what are the things that we can add to the program of studies you know, in addition to, you know, guiding students to opportunities like the tech center, thinking about what are the things that we can do at MBU that can be a little bit more flexible and get students excited. <laughs> and I just went through group by group. So what I've been doing so far. So with the faculty and staff, we have a professional development goal around universal design for learning. So since the staff is doing that already, I've put in, made the connections between PLP. So it's not a new thing. It's just a different part of what we're already doing. And I've been meeting with groups of teachers in mostly grade level groups so far, but I'll be working with departments to talk about, you know, how I can be a support and what ideas they have. And I talked a little bit, well, probably talked a lot of it about this already. We can go to the next one. And eighth grade, yep. So the exciting thing about eighth grade is they'll be updating their PLPs in classes because again, I only see them for a quarter a year and some of them I won't see until April. So through their homeroom and their core classes, they will be setting goals and reflecting on what they've learned. In ninth grade, it'll be pretty similar. Um, and so far, most teachers are really focusing on that early relationship building. So we haven't set any clear this is the date we're going to do it, but there are ninth grade teachers who plan on having students access their PLPs. And that way, as ninth grade teachers and the career teachers are asking students to add to their PLPs, if there's any students who are missing pieces, who went to school somewhere else, I can help support them during teacher time. And through career exploration, they'll be doing all sorts of stuff. And basically, all the great stuff that Mary Hartman has them do, and Angie, and career exploration is an essential part of their PLB. So, having a resume, having all their experience in job shadows, and even more career interest inventories will all be there. And for a lot In 12th grade, since last year creating the Google Sites happened seven through nine, our 11th and 12th graders don't yet have a Google site, but Jason Barney and I, through our uh, required senior capstone class, Economic Citizenship, we've done this over the years where they make a Google site that has the essentials of our class, which is creating a budget based on research for their future career, finding a place to live, a food budget, all that stuff that has a lot of overlap with PLPs. So even though it's not as robust as the seven through 10 PLPs, our 11th and 12th graders will have a version of that. And now knowing what, um, after hearing about this opportunity for the classes that students can take and that having a PLP will be a part of that, mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, I'll work with guidance to make sure any student who's interested in that, I will help them catch up and create a, an up-to-date PLP. And just some big picture stuff I've thought about um, and talked about with um, other 
groups or you know a lot of times just Jen <laughs> thinking about how PLPs can be connected to graduation. So many schools have a big senior project or capstone project and they make a presentation and it's a real great uh, you know, way to connect with the community and something that's really meaningful. And that's something that I could see being you know, connected to our PLPs, making sure moving forward that we have a clear piece for community service in our PLPs. That's been a pet project of mine for a long time. Um, and Tyler and I have started researching some options for how can we have PLPs more closely connected to transcripts and test scores and work-based learning and a family portal. So there's some exciting options out there. Some, you know, sometimes exciting things cost money. So we are in the very early stages of research, but these are things that uh, excite and interest both Tyler and I. Um, always, I always want to invite that elementary schools and you know if they have any input or there's ways that we can have you know our students come and visit the elementary schools is something they do in their MBU experience to teach a lesson or help out or something like that those have been really cool and then along the way throughout this year anytime I hear cool ideas from people in the community we'll put them in as goals that's all I got. <laughs> it's a lot. All right, well, up for discussion. Any comments or questions for us? Off to a good start. Thanks. I'd like to see you come back next year, same place, same time. Tell us all the good things. <laughs> but I, I don't know how it'll happen. I'll be up to certainly Dan and Julie, but it'd be nice to get updates along the way on what's happening. Uh, I know that some schools are just scratching the surface. But other schools have been at it for about three years or somewhere in between. But I think it's a really great opportunity. I think it's really great. And I was curious when you started talking about the 11th and 12th grade, maybe not being as robust. Is that because they didn't have seventh, eighth? And that, but okay. It's because the position just started last year and like scheduling but that, was, that person was only able to work with. That. Gotcha. So I, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's very interesting. It's great the way you're wrapping it all together. I and with the different, I, you know, the professional development where you're talking about that. I have a question though, and I'm thinking back to and maybe things have changed, but there seems to be a lot of classes or health class and different classes like that. I remember my kids coming home with things saying that you know this is what I like, this is what I'm good at. I mean, there seems to be. Does that is uh, repetition a good thing to those ages, or is there some way to get it so that? I don't have so there. I mean, I don't know is repetition good or is repetition or should we have more coordination so there isn't so much repetition? But. And one of the things that I've started doing, and as a in a coordinator role, is thinking about what makes sense in terms of you know the, the vertical path and the outcomes. So for example, the career interest inventory. So making sure that if students are taking career interest inventories, they're what will work for their career exploration class. I haven't heard from any student that they've done too much about talking about themselves. I think I middle schoolers, yeah, middle schoolers tend to love, and they change so much day <laughs> I to day. I heard a lot reading those things. Yeah, so. they, they, it wondered. changes so much day to day, and doing these activities, you know, for, for at least 10 years, I, I will do them right along with the students. I'm like, oh, my favorite color is different than it was last year. <laughs> what is my favorite? Who am I? Um, so I haven't heard of any, and I feel like students never hesitate to tell me when they've done something in another class <laughs> and that they don't want to do it anymore. So I will keep my ear out for that for sure. Um, and I think we have a, a big enough bank of these activities so we're not all like printing out the same one and asking kids to do the same thing. But as we get further along in this process, I'll definitely be working with all the teachers and hopefully we can streamline a lot of that stuff and maybe, you know, like, oh, in seventh grade, they focus more on this aspect of yeah. themselves and then, you know, so it's not, they don't have any gaps. It's like capturing it. Yeah. Because you know, it's one thing to have the repetition, but it's like capturing it would be really. And that's where the PLP and then yeah. it's this uh, balance of, 
we want to make it not an extra thing where it's like you put everything in there, but we want it to document all those important things. So if a teacher genuinely wants to know what are you interested in and a student's like, well, I don't know, they could pull up their PLP and say, oh, yeah. you know what? <laughs> I do like animals and they could <laughs> use forgot. that as a way to facilitate <laughs> communication and with families too, like those, yeah. you know, we all have kids and your kid comes home, I have a seven-year-old and they're like, well, I don't know what I did. <laughs> this is another uh, way to communicate between school and families about what is actually happening and believe it or not, your student, you know, wants to, wants to help people. I love that so much. Have a lot of free time. Create things. <laughs> the amount of our seventh graders that want to invent and create things. That's exciting. I think the other piece that is important to remember through the process is that it's not so much the answers to the questions, but asking the questions, right? That we want our students to um, have the self-awareness skills to pause and reflect on how they are interacting with learning. And how that does vary from day to day, you know, and what we need to, to be our best selves. Um, and so it's it's about the questions, but it's also just about the, the practicing of reflecting and being self-aware. Yeah, um, you know, just recently we approved our vision statement, which is on our bottom of our agenda now, uh, saying that, you know, the Mississauga Valley School District supports students in finding success along the path they choose. And so the foundation to that is, is finding a path, right, to be successful on it. It'll change, obviously, day to day, year to year. Um, so, you know, that's why we have such a keen interest in the, the personalized learning plans and, and really hoping to see them grow and develop. And um, I think we will, we're excited about where we are and where it's headed. And I, I I think we will be asking you back uh, from time oh, yeah. to time. We'd love to hear how it's going and support you uh, in this process however we can. So thank you, Alyssa. And you gotta love some of these questions. Oh, would you rather be dead or alive? I didn't think they're not to be there. Like they are well from the internet. Yeah. 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 Some of them lots yeah. of good conversation. Oh, but yeah, yeah, I would love to come back anytime. And I'm hoping that and seeing how comfortable students were talking, uh, that's really exciting for me because I know that I can ask students to come and share their PLPs yeah. as they develop. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. And if there's ever any ideas, you know, you all are very well connected in the community. If anything comes up, if you're like, oh, I saw this event or I had this idea, I love ideas. Feel free to, to email me, share things with me. I'm always looking for things. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think you could wake anybody's right now. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Seniors, seniors who have a first in the morning don't love it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're shifting gears now. Um, we're going to update to the Franklin uh, project design, and it's John Brown online. Is that person? He's presenting. He's, He's just not presenting. Okay. No. I'm just hanging out. He's on. Just questions, though, John. Okay. Yeah. Let me play my computer over here. I brought it here, plugged it in because I could not remember if I had charged it. Is this not what I? Uh, usual use, but this one has been used at every use. So I knew I thought I'm having trouble getting online. I couldn't imagine tonight trying to figure out uh, what the T word and password was and everything else. So at one point I had this. Well, why I asked the report tonight, though, you know, our facilities meetings are pretty uh, good discussions. But usually there are a limited number of topics. So before we dive into the full presentation, Don, we do have the Franklin project and the presentation specifically as the first item. Yeah, okay. So uh, our, just want to be ready. Are you are you presenting the, the Franklin project design? Uh, I thought we were going to have John do the 
I'm, I'm happy to go over it. He was just here for questions because we asked him to. It's literally just so, four slides. I, I thought that John or Laura or somebody would do that. Okay. And I can speak to that, but I thought some of the other issues that maybe board members haven't even heard about yep. would be appropriate to do tonight. So. Okay. So we'll start with Laura and the Franklin project, and then we'll circle back to the remaining items from Don. Okay, so real quick, um, we just, I think the task force, uh, we did show this for the task force, I should say, but then we thought we would bring it here, that the architectural layout is ready for approval. There were just a few small changes from the version of the Franklin design that you all approved. Um, and this is just part of the process. It's nothing long, um, significant, but just part of the process. So we do have some renderings to show you the, the direction of the design. Make that any bigger. Um, so again, same footprint, same new square footage, same renovated square footage. Um, a couple of things to highlight the pre K classroom, which is in the upper right hand corner, and then the additional classroom in the bottom right hand corner. Um, that's the additional classroom space. We swapped them um, because actually the pre K classroom was a few square feet larger. And so Joyce did some research with the pre K teacher there and they decided to swap those two spaces. Um, and then also in that same area in between where you can see the entrance to, um, yep, right there, um, that is now um, just designed a little differently it, because that's an access point. There's actually a road that goes by there for deliveries and fuel deliveries and food and stuff like that. That has to be a recessed entry. You can't have them, um, students just walking straight out into the road. There has to be like a, 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 an entry there where it's recessed. So that has been adjust, adjusted. And then on the bottom left, the, the three student support services spaces, um, those are basically um, small group uh, student support areas or um, office spaces. Those used to be three different sizes for three different um, types of uh, service. And Joyce worked with her staff, and then we talked with um, John and the architects, and we think that would be better for them to have them all the same size. Um, and so that has been adjusted. But other than that, pretty much the same. Um, so we wanted to bring that to you. This is just um, a schematic of the front. Um, I think obviously, the bell tower is super important to Joyce, so I want to make sure I point that out. It may or may not look exactly like this. This is where we are in the process right now. For instance, there's, um, um, I think, granite. That gray is right now reflects granite on the bottom. Um, it probably will not be granite, but that's just what we have so far. Um, but you kind of get an idea of the entry in the bell tower. It is offset, it's not centered. Um, go to the next one. Um, you can see how it also like kind of jets out in the front. Um, that little circle on the front is actually an access point. We haven't decided exactly what will be done with that, but it's an important access for the mechanical systems that will be in the school. So trying to make that something more uh, aesthetically pleasing will be important and we're working through that. But um, just that's about it. We just wanted to bring this uh, to the full board. I think there is, I don't want to speak for Don, but I believe there was a facility task force recommendation to approve this design. Right, Don? Yes, it was. So uh, just to follow along with this, and certainly Laura or John and Robbie, but I think a couple of things here that I just want to reinforce to the board that I thought were important in that whole discussion. Uh, Changing the space from the pre-K to the larger space was something I'd never thought about. We never really discussed, we were just going to have spaces, but I'm really pleased that we did that because if you look to the future, you, you might have significant growth in pre-K. And if you take and design a room, a smaller room, because a pre-K room is going to be different than a bubble room, which might be used for sixth graders. So I, I thought, even though that may sound like a small thing, I think that was a really big thing on the Somebody caught it early on um, because I don't know about other board members, but I wasn't. When they say classroom, I wasn't saying how many square feet and all this. So somebody picked it up. And that's, I think that'll make a difference you know, in the whole use of the building. Uh, the other thing that we haven't talked much about, um, but uh, John is working and maybe he's got something to say tonight working with the fire chief because the size of the water main in the street and coming to the school may become an issue. Uh, I don't know, maybe Laura knows more about it, but that was something that kind of has come up recently that we, we it's going to have to be addressed uh, because with the sprinkler, and this is not a surprise, but if you hear about it, you may say that's a surprise. Uh, I think all along, most of the people directly involved kind of felt that the state would say you have to sprinkle the whole building. Uh, you know, I think uh, at one of the meetings early on, there was talk 
that maybe we could get a waiver on all of this, but experience tells me that usually when we get to a certain point, we go up the hammer, we have to do it. So now we know we have to do it. We need to find out how to pay for it. I think it will come fine. Uh, if there are questions, certainly John is there and Laura is there. Go ahead and ask them. But from my point of view, that's the only thing I want to say about that project. I just do want to point out that the cost of the sprinkling is built into the four point one million dollar project cost because we expected yeah. that to happen. Yeah, I think that's so, the, so the other things from the facilities committee that I have a uh, first we yeah, let's oh. first uh, I guess uh, the facilities committee has recommended this to the full board, so we're looking for a motion tonight to uh, approve this latest design <coughs> so that we can move forward. And I'm going to make that motion. All right, that one's a first. Is there a second? Oh, no, I, I can second. Right. Exactly. It's Toby. Okay, Toby's a second. All right, any further discussion on this project and questions? Jen? I have a couple of questions. Um, to, it's not the final design, the final design is brought to the board to, for approval, correct? I would think that Laura would be bringing information to all about every board meeting. I mean, there could be hmm. smaller changes, but this is basically oh, right now. This is we can't really make structural changes after this. We're at a commitment point so that the architects and engineers can start doing the rest of the work. So there won't be any, there really isn't any more time for that. And I know I missed the last thing, but um so just some questions like do they have the safety glass at the entrance since they're having the new entrance? It's not ballistic glass like it is here. It, but it is safe. It is. Well, we yeah. have, it's an it's a film. safe filming. There's a film that goes on them that is resistant. I should, I think is the right word. So it won't, if a bullet can actually travel through it, um, but it doesn't shatter and fall to the ground. So some would actually have to, it's similar to what Franklin has in the rest of their, um, their windows. Just so the bell tower is a definite stay. <laughs> they have a, they have a bell now. They have a bell now, and it's very important to Franklin. Okay. Students ring the bell when they graduate. There's a whole uh, thing that happens. I guess it's a very important part of their culture well, there. Yeah, the yeah. bell's not going anywhere. Well, history the the bell came from the we had the, what they called the white building, something like Highgate, and that was in that white building. And when we um, you know, uh, built a new school. We took that bell from the white building and brought it to the school. So there's a lot of years and years of tradition and behind that in history. So it's the same bell. The same bell. Yeah. I'm not going to fight that one. No. <laughs> no, 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 I was no, just no, thinking about no, term maintenance, but I'm going to let it go. My <laughs> <laughs> stories. Well, they, that was the first thing that John Brown from EEI picked up on is the bell has to be hung. <laughs> Right. Yep. I just have one question that is so the facilities committee looked at all this because you know we had done some talks about how we may need to make some transformational changes. For example, some kids, extra kids might be going to Franklin, and some might, you know, depending on space requirements, some kids from Franklin or Swat and Highgate, you know, they might just need to have more children in South Schools. Is this design the best design to to incorporate that if that comes about? That's just my question. I'm going to say yes. And I think the thing that does it is that uh, having a bubble classroom allows for students who might want to go to the uh, I think having their own uh, space, designated space for uh, preschool it does. Uh, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I mean, those are the things we've talked about. No, yeah, I think you're right. So it's, it's, it's. I mean, there, let, let me tell you this we could have put 8 million in the Franklin School. Okay. Yeah. Just like we could put 12 million in the Babcock. Mm -hmm. uh, and this did kind of grow like top six from originally what we were talking about earlier. But I think this should put them in position for at least a decade. That's my take. Okay. Uh, hopefully longer, hopefully 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, there's still things that uh, I'm sure people there are going to say, why did you do this while you were doing the project? Well, there, you do reach a point where you have to. You only have so much money. Right. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think with, within the budget constraints, it's, it's the, a step in that right direction. It yeah. doesn't limit 
if we needed future expansion, that would, that's kind of that other wing that we saw on those other options that still could be on the table. Obviously, that's long term. No, that thank you. That does answer. Well, answer. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have something that's not related to our minutes, but it's related to previous minutes. I'd ask a Laura for the last time for clarification. And there's been exchange of information. I don't know if we've seen it, but the contingency is 10%. And at some point, we need to revise that in a minute. It's just not. I think it, I think it was revised. Did you repeat the motion? Uh, so the motion is for the board to approve uh, the design. Mm -hmm. the just, just, just the design, not the architectural design, just the design. Is there a difference? Huh? <laughs> is there a difference? I don't know. I think the design, design is, uh, proposal. I design, think it's yeah. fine. The design yeah. proposal. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lock us in enough to get things moving and not so much that they can't make future adjustments. Yeah, right. Little things. That, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Any other final comments, questions? I make the motion to open second it. So yes. All right. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Extension motion carries six zero. All right. Um, and now we'll turn it over to Don for information okay. on the this is basically information. Uh, but our committee, and Peter's not here tonight, but he was in agreement too. I can make some of it come back. We really feel it's important when we're spending this kind of money on a school to keep the board informed. So if the board at some point says, we don't want to hear about this anymore, uh, that we just trust you three people with the administration, uh, then we can do that. But uh, this, this is a big project that more people get to know about, there will be more questions. So just some other highlights. Don't forget we have an MVU project. We'll be budgeting for that when we build the budget here in a few months. Uh, we're looking at a million plus uh, to do one of the pods. And as we look out to complete this, uh, when we get to what they call phase five over the gym, instead of one million, we're probably going to be looking at four to five million. So it's just something to keep in your mind as a board member as we start thinking about budgets and other facilities. Uh, on the good news front, at least good news to me, uh, I've been an advocate for the Babcock School and that we need to do something uh, but we can't do a lot to the Babcock School right now. I think we have a head of maintenance that's doing the essential things. Uh, but we had talked about a study. Uh, so as I said earlier, if we know what the essentials are and how much they cost at a point in time, then we might be in a better position, would be in a better position if the state starts making funds available or other places. But uh, sometimes there are other funds that come through. And to be maybe on the first or second step rather than no steps. Uh, after talking about it at the last meeting, we're hoping to do something that would be uh, what, less than 100,000 more rather than 225 or whatever we had talked about at one time. Uh, we don't really need design. Uh, we just need to know what our systems there are, mechanical systems and all of those plumbing systems and everything that's there. You know, how bad are they? We know we look along, but uh, what would it cost uh, to bring that up to all of them? I don't want to say codes because codes kind of are a problem that's bigger than it is, but the issues that need to be addressed. So that money uh, hopefully is significantly less than that. And then Laura had reported on ECB testing schedule. I guess maybe Jason did too. And uh, that's just moving on. You don't really need to know about it. It's going to happen with or without us. Uh, <laughs> Whether we like it or not, right, Don? And then uh, HVAC controls, which is a big one. Uh, we also talked about the central office lease, which is coming up. And uh, the facilities committee, at some point when the lease comes, will tell you that we were in agreement with continuing there for uh, is it three years or uh, because even if tomorrow we decided we wanted to do something different. Things don't happen that uh, quickly. Uh, we did have a fair amount of discussion about the whole idea of uh, giving an easement for electricity, but we got the information we needed, so that was great. Uh, I don't know how many years I've heard discussion about a sign at MVU, 
and it looks like it may be in our future. So we'll see what happens. I don't know, Laura, if you want to give any update on that, but uh, concept approval went in today, and as far as our best are concept approval. Dan and people working on it. Uh, another non surprise to me, and maybe people aren't that uh, concerned, uh, but we kind of had, a, I had a feeling, I think some of the facility committee members did, uh, that in Highgate, sooner or later the fire marshal is going to say, your kitchen stove but doesn't meet code. And I think probably been told that a number of times. I mean, we're told so, formally that now. So now it's there. And uh, the, the cost that Laura said, or John said, or somebody said 150000 to 200000 uh, That's not found money yet, but we're hoping and uh, we'll wait for Laura to update us on a hot lunch account and how much might be there. He said it has to be a fire, have a fire suppression system and it involves engineering in the roof and it involves breaking into the roof, like it's the whole thing. It's not the hood itself. Right. So I just didn't want you to not know all these nice things are happening uh, in your school district, and I don't think there's much else that I want to talk about because we'll be talking at budget time. Thank will, you for letting me do that. Yeah, thanks, Don, for the update. I will note that the uh, class gift from the class of 2022 was money towards the sign here at MBU. So oh, it was. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that balance is. I'm sure we'll need much more, but uh, it will go towards that so definitely a, a timely a timely relevant gift yeah. for sure um all right that brings us to the end of the agenda so future agenda items uh we'll be talking about some board development plans um continuous improvement plan we have the budget timeline um the budget timeline is actually in the folder for tonight's meeting. So make sure you take a look at that. We'll have time to discuss that uh, coming up in October. Um, we'll be in Swanton. We will be in Swanton. So we'll have some Swanton uh, specific yes. things. I, don't know I we believe have. we're going to be talking about PDIS and the uh, training and initiative that Chris Dodge uh, has for the whole school. Very good. Can we also, I'm talking one way Swanton visit the Bad Park School. Yeah, I, I, Julie and I talked about that. <laughs> we were going to, and that was the month when everything shut down. Yeah. That was our next board meeting. We were going to tour Bad so, so we have two meetings in October, and as we build these agendas, we will make sure that there's time in one of those to uh, take that tour. I want Joanne to see it. I don't think Joanne did a book for the Question. Sorry. How old is the Babcock building? Uh, 75 years. 19, so, okay. 1964. 64? I thought it was in the 50s. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> the only reason I know it's 1964 is okay. it, that it shares a birthday with somebody I know. Is <laughs> so it's 58 years old. The, the only reason I wondered is because I wonder if it was in the same state as the white building in Highgate or if it's kind of bad. Oh, no, 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 no. It's actually in beautiful condition because the board has been committed to the previous <laughs> I think parts of it are beautiful. The floors have been done, the assessment. I mean, we had a whole plan, but yes, when it was back classroom in by classroom, they've and, been yeah, doing this. So mm -hmm. the school looks lovely, but the things that we will be looking at are electrical and plumbing kinds of things. I was just worried when I heard about that. Thinking, oh, okay. Thank you. It's 58. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our, our next uh, meeting, um, we'll be doing our consent agenda meeting, our shortened meeting at 6 p.m. at the Swanton Central School Library on Tuesday, October 4th. That will be followed the same night, October 4th, uh, at 6.30 with our regular full board meeting, also in Swanton Central School Library. Mr. Um, Chairman, before you adjourn, I do have one question. Sure, Don. We'll do it now. Uh, well, let's wait until you finish. I'm about your... to ask to adjourn. That's oh, next. Okay. <laughs> My question, uh, and maybe it's something Julie knows or can check on. I like the idea of having a six o'clock meeting, but I wonder about the advisability of not approving minutes for a whole month. You know, you have to have them available to the public. They the are seat. now. So after five days. Yep. But they're not approved minutes. No, they say draft them. Right. 
And I just wonder, because usually within two weeks, you approve the draft. So I, I don't know. Uh, but I think it might be worth a call for an attorney or somebody to see if, they sh if there's nothing in statute says what you have to take it off of. But I, I, I think I'd be more comfortable if I knew that it was all right to go a whole month for the draft minutes. Up. Right now, we don't have much contention about anything. But, you know, when things get contentious and people start asking for minutes. Yeah, sure. So, you know, just, a, just a question. Yep. I don't want to be wrong. All right. So, with that, I'll set the motion to adjourn. There is the first, there's the second, Jen's the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 6 0. We're adjourned at 8 14. Thank you.